All right, let's get started. Welcome to the Good Pitch Summit 2020. Now, before I realize halfway into the summit that nobody can see me, nobody can hear me, nobody can see my slides, I see Sapna and Cassandra smiling, so thumbs up. You can see me well, you can hear me, and you can see my slides. Matt, thank you very much. Perfect, let's get started. Now, I'm super excited to host this very special event for us. And the reason why we've decided to do this is because at the heart of everything we do at Ideas on Stage are the entrepreneurs and business leaders who want to change the world for the better. We are big, big, big advocates of business as a force for good. And we also believe that if you have an idea that can change the world, it's your responsibility, it's your obligation to make sure that you can communicate it effectively. And so when you combine these two beliefs, the belief that business can and should be a force for good, and the belief that you can have the greatest idea in the world, but if you can't communicate it, if you can't do it effectively, I'm sorry, but that idea doesn't matter, when you combine these two beliefs, that's what happens, the Good, Beat, the good Pitch Summit 2020. Now, be, before we jump straight into the summit, I'm, I'm going to explain quickly how it works. Just type in the chat box, please. What, what country are you tuning in from? I'm always interested. I know that we've got some people from the UK. I'm in London, but I guess we've got people from other countries as well. Just let me know, Spain, the United States. Hi, Rose. Greece, London, UK, what else? What else? I'm in London as well. Okay, France. Yeah, Cassandra, perfect. It's great to see interest in, in the, we also have people from Leeds. Wow. <laughs> it's great to see interest in, in this topic from different parts of the world. And just a couple of housekeeping rules before we get started. I would love for this summit to be as interactive as possible. And there are a couple of things we can all do. I see many of you are doing it already. Now, especially if you are dressed up like this part, then it would be great if all of you could turn your webcam on. If we want to make a strong connection, that's, that's the best thing we can do. Of course, you don't have to, but if you can, it would be amazing. And the other thing is, as we are doing already, from time to time, let's use the chat box. So if I ask you a question or if I invite you to interact with me or with the speakers or with the judges, please use the chat box and that way we make it more interactive. And again, before we get started, just a super, super quick introduction about me and our company. My name is Andrea, I'm a presentation coach and I'm the founder of Ideas On Stage in the UK, I'm in London but we are also in Paris, Milan, and Barcelona. In the last 10 years, we've been working with thousands of clients from the very small business owner and founder and professional, all the way up to clients like Microsoft, Lacoste, the World Bank. We've been coaching more than 400 TEDx speakers so far. And we specialize in working with established business owners and professionals who want to either grow their business or boost their careers through great presenting. And my vision in the next 10 years is to help as many purpose-driven entrepreneurs as possible share the message, make an impact, and be memorable. Why? Because I think we all share the same values in this summit. I strongly believe that if you want to make an impact, the best thing you can do is to be an entrepreneur who has a mission, a vision that goes beyond just making money. And I know that for them, if they can use that voice for good and we like to help them, then we can all contribute to changing the world for the better. But enough about me. We are here to live and experience the Good Pitch Summit. Now, here is how it's going to work. We've got four amazing purpose-driven entrepreneurs and three also amazing, highly experienced judges, and each speaker is going to pitch and present his or her idea in maximum, remember speakers, 
maximum five minutes. And then after each presentation, we've got three judges who will share their input in terms of what they liked, what maybe what could be done better. And what's really important for me to mention is that now we call these a pitch competition. However, this is not the competition element of the summit. This is not about evaluating who is doing more good in the world. Each of the four speakers are doing an incredible job at changing the world for the better. So the competition is not about that. The competition is just about their ability to pitch and present and communicate their ideas effectively, which is connected to, to what we do in, in our company at, at Ideas on Stage. So, as I mentioned, four speakers, Cassandra, Delage, Letty Galdon, Arun J, Katakam, and Sapna Pierrot. Quick introduction, Cassandra is the founder of Plastif, and she's going to talk about impact recycling. Everything they do at Plastif, they do it because they want to make an impact, a positive impact on the environment. Cassandra, thank you very much for being part of this event. I'm really looking forward to watching your presentation. Then we have Letty Galdon, co-founder of Path. I hope, Letty, that I'm pronouncing it correctly. Now, it's, I guess it's Spanish. Is it peas? That means yeah. peas. Yeah, perfect. So I'm Italian. I'm supposed to know Spanish a little bit, but I don't. So sorry about that. But Letty, co-founder of Path, and she's going to talk about this idea of unlocking refugee talent. Letty believes that refugees can change the world for the better if you give them a chance. So very inspiring topic. And again, thank you, Letty, for being part of this. We also have Arun J. Katakam, founder of the Inclusion Action Lab. Now, Arun J. has a very bold mission, a very bold vision, which I support. I think we all do 100%. He's on a mission to end poverty for the last billion people by 2030. That's what he's going to talk about in five minutes. Let's see how he goes about it. Thank you very much, Arun J. And then we have at the end, Sapna Pierrot, founder of Innovisions ID. She's going to, the title of her talk is Your Values Are Your Brand. Now, Sapna, I don't want to spoil it, I don't want to anticipate anything, but just maybe one thing. Allow me to just say one thing. Satna is going to share with us a very, very important message. And she's going to explain to us why any business can and should be a force for good. And that's it, Satna. I'm not going to mention anything else, but that's the idea behind Sapna's presentation. Thank you, Sapna, for cooperating with us on this summit. So Cassandra, Letty, Arunjay, and Sapna. And then we have three amazing, very experienced judges, Paul McGillivray, Rose Bloomfield, and Matt Essam. Paul is the co-founder of Remote. He's a TEDx speaker. He knows a thing or two about effective pitching and presenting. And he's also the host of an amazing podcast, The Purpose First Podcast. And Paul, when I discovered your podcast a few months ago, I said, I really loved it. And I said, this guy, he needs to be a judge in our, in our summit. So thank you very much for, for cooperating with us. Rose Bloomfield, I know Rose very well. We have worked together at Ideas on Stage. Rose is a coach and speaker. She's also the host of another incredible podcast, The Path and Purpose podcast. And Rose is not only is she very much connected to the values behind this summit, but she's also, I've seen it, she's also an amazing communication and presentation coach, much better than me. So perfect fit for, for this summit. And also Matt Essam. Matt is a creative business coach, speaker, author in the last few years. He has spoken at like hundreds, more than that, of events. So you really understand what it takes to pitch and present and communicate your ideas effectively to a live audience. And he's also an example of somebody who has started and built a successful business with purpose. So again, Matt, perfect fit and even if it was a short notice with you but thank you very much for your support i really appreciate it and i would say let's get started so the order is and i can stop sharing 
the order is Cassandra, Leti, Arunjay, and Sapna, as I mentioned, five minutes each, and then we've got a quick feedback from, from each of the three judges. So Cassandra, I'm, we are all actually, before you get started, for everybody, could you please type just a quick exclamation mark in the chat box just to make sure that we are all ready to get started. So please just type an exclamation mark. Thank you, perfect. Also the audience of Jenya, thank you very much. Great to see you here, Sean, fantastic. Perfect, so we are all ready to get started. Cassandra, the audience is all yours. And I'm going to mute myself now. Thank you so much, Andrea. Okay, let's get started. So imagine a greener future where recycling becomes a norm, where we don't need to consume new resources, where we transform what has already been produced, such as plastic, into a virtuous cycle. This is the world we want to create, and it's not utopian at all. We're much closer to reaching it than ever before. It's also why today I'm proud to say that I'm the founder of Plastif. With a small team of seven, which I'm incredibly honored to work with, we strive to create a circular economy and a new way of consuming, or at least a new way of thinking about consumption. We've developed a machine that recycles all plastic waste and allows people to 3D print new objects from that waste. We recycle plastic water bottles, cups, cutlery, and 3D print objects from that. It's one machine that creates the whole recycling process. The plastic is inserted, sorted, transformed, and 3D printed. We simply choose a product we want to print from the catalog on the touchscreen. It's simple. It's local. At Plastic, we're changing the way we use plastic. Our goal is to change mentalities to seeing that plastic waste can become a new object instead of seeing waste as a disposable product and transform our waste into practical objects for our home, for work, for teams, or for communities. Plastic creates this circular transformation right in front of us. We can see the impact of our actions where we can make a sense of what it means to dispose of a product and to create a new one, where we can see the life cycle of our products from waste to finished goods. And we can change the course of our actions and of our consumption. What we believe is that if we want to change things, we have to provoke change. Today, we've developed this first machine that we place in companies and help employees recycle better. Tomorrow, we'll develop bigger machines placed in warehouses, in distribution centers, where there are hundreds of tons of plastic that arrive on the spot and could be transformed locally. Imagine you as a consumer, instead of buying your product made in China online, you'd be able to buy the same product with the same design made from plastic and produce five kilometers from your house. That's where we're heading. And eventually, we'll have even bigger machines in every neighborhood. And as a citizen this time, I'll be able to recycle my plastic at the corner of my street and my actions will count. And almost as a citizen that decides to vote, I'll be able to decide how I want my plastic to affect our lives. I'll be able to recycle it and 3D print a bench, a bus stop, the next park for my community with my plastic waste. We can actually create and build our communities. So let's put recycling back at the heart of our office spaces, of our warehouses, cities, but also our minds. Let's put recycling back into a conscious choice and a decision process. Banning an issue doesn't resolve it. Changing the way people think about an issue resolves it. Let's show that plastic waste is an opportunity to literally create tomorrow's world. Let's become actors of the change to create a greener future.
where recycling is the norm, where whole communities are developed by its citizens, where we don't need to consume new resources, where we transform what has been produced, such as our plastic, into a virtuous cycle. This world we want to create is not utopian at all, and we're much closer to reaching it than ever before. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cassandra. Yeah, Sean was clapping. That's amazing. Yeah, well done. And actually, it was perfect timing. There's five, five minutes. And now, my role is not to, to share any feedback. For this, we've got our judges. So you, you choose Rose, Matt, Paul, if you want to. Who wants to go first? I would say ladies first. But before you start with your feedback, I would say, and of course you are totally flexible in terms of what feedback you want to share. From my perspective, if you can, it would really be great if you could share with, with, with everybody here, maybe one thing that you really liked about Cassandra's presentation. And if there is anything, because maybe there isn't, but if there is something that you think she could do to, to make it even better. Okay, I'm unmuting myself. Good morning slash evening, everyone. Um, Cassandra, uh, this is not my first time seeing you. Um, hi. hi. So, yes, it's very easy to say, uh, I'll say two things I really liked about your pitch was I'm paying close attention to congruence between tone and face and message. And that was all there. So I really felt a sense of joy and dream and pride and po possibility in what you were talking about. And I think that's so important for, for pitching a product so, and, and a business. Um, that was fantastic. As was, I would say it was strong to really use a lot of concrete examples and, and bring it down to earth by even mentioning specific types of products that your um, company can create through this recycling process and 3D printing. So that was, those were two excellent points in my mind. The one area I think that perhaps was uh, clear to, I, I'm curious, um, your, your reading, of course. So at that point, and this is just a teachable moment for pitching, the moment you read, there is a loss of connection in the moment. Um, of course, getting ready for a, a project. So even, even if you've got a five minute pitch, if you can memorize and really connect with the first 30 seconds or the first small piece of your pitch, that will make a huge difference. Um, same thing with the final line. So that's all I'm gonna say for now, but excellent job. I love what you're doing. I completely believe in it. I'm gonna pass it over to Paul. Thanks. Thank you. Hello, hi, Cassandra. Um, it's 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 really it's really difficult, isn't it? Because um, we're all purpose driven. We all get it already, and so it's like I'm going to say, I my mind's blown to every every talk. I'm I'm sure, but my, my my mind is blown. I thought that was that was fantastic. I love your vision. I I love I love what you're doing. So real, you know, huge respect to what you're doing and what you're aiming for. I was I was I was genuinely moved by it actually. Um, so it's really difficult to to go to try and find some way that you could improve <laughs> um, that. So I think I felt like I was watching a TED talk. The the way the the, the, the um, actually one where someone has just commented the rhythm and tone, it, the pacing and everything really felt like you. I was watching a, a TED talk. So that that was I was I was I was taken away with that. Um, so I think for me. Pitches are about structure. So one thing that I might point you point you towards, it felt like, and I'm all in on this. So you know, take take what you like from it. It was all vision. And I met. It maybe would have been nice to know how you came upon this, why you're doing this now, what your what your experience is. Because I imagine that if I was to ask you, you would be able to tell me a story of your journey that would probably blow me away too. Um, so starting. Also, again, we're purpose-driven people, so none of us here probably need to be told how important it is to start recycling our plastic. But if you were to be pitching outside of this bubble, then maybe a 
I was trained in pitching by uh, the DENT KPI accelerator. Daniel Priestley um, has, a, has a, a, a format which is um, clarity, authority, the problem, the solution, the why, opportunities, next steps, and the essence. And that kind of flow, I'm not saying this is definitely the way to do it, but just starting off with uh, the, the problem. This is the problem we're facing. This is why what I'm doing is so important. Um, because many of us know why it's so important, but amazingly, there may be someone that doesn't. <laughs> and so to start with that and then to turn it around with this is what I'm doing and this is what our opportunity is here. This is, this is my vision. Um, is, is the only way I, I think maybe you would change that. But, you know, I'm, I'm really uh, being picky here because I, 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 was, I thought it was a fantastic pitch. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Awesome. So just me left. Um, yeah, I agree with a lot of what Paul said there. And I think the thing that I loved about it is that you started with a vision. You got people to imagine what this world would be like, which is a very powerful thing to do to take people there. Um, I obviously same as everybody else. I'm very much behind this and I think it's great what you're doing. I think that goes without saying almost for me, the, the thing that you could really improve on here is bringing it from this kind of higher vision of this is how we're going to change the world to how does it relate to me personally? I think from a lot of these bigger problems that we all want to tackle, in my opinion, the reason that things don't gain as much traction is because we're not actually thinking about the individual, that person that, you know, should recycle more. Maybe they even know they should recycle more. It's not related to like me. So why is this a problem for me? Because the kind of making the world better thing is a thing that's always in our minds to do, but it's like practically how does that show up on a daily basis? So what I would have loved to have seen more of in that pitch was maybe some just like, really hard, slightly shocking facts about the things that not recycling are doing to us personally, not just the world, because it's quite a hard concept for people to really get in their head about the world is going to be in danger in X amount of time. And that's just like a, a human psychology thing. It's like this degree of consequence. We all know we should go to the gym more because in like 30 years time, we're not going to be as fit, but like, how does that apply to today? So I think in terms of tangible feedback, what I would love to you to work on is get really, really clear on like, who is this pitch aimed at? Like, who is, who is the end person? Is it me as a consumer or is it a manufacturer? Or, you know, that, that wasn't particularly clear to me. I love the cause. I love the purpose. But I think if you could really define that avatar, get really clear on who that person is that you want to hear that pitch and make that change then I think that would really help you to kind of drill down into some of the tangible problems that I'm going to experience if I don't buy into this vision or start changing my behavior. And I think you summed it up really nicely at the end. You did touch on it and I might be misquoting here, but I think you said it's about changing the way people think about a problem. Um, and so I think that just needs maybe a little bit more personal context. Very fair. Thank you so much. Perfect. Thank you very much. And now we can get started with our second speaker, Letty. Letty, whenever you want, the audience is all yours. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me here. Um, I'm Letty. I'm one of the founders of Path.ai. Path in Spanish means peace. And our purpose is to bring hope to refugees and forcibly displaced people in Europe. Hope is a very abstract term, uh, but for refugees, Hope means opportunities to move forward. The chance to regain control of their lives and provide a future away from the horrors of war and violence. It's a chance for getting back their dignity. Europe has stigmatized refugees as if they represented a threat to our society, when in fact, these are the most peaceful, hardworking, resilient, and proactive people in the world. These are mothers, fathers, brothers and sisters, daughters and sons, forced to leave their homes after being subjected to physical, psychological, sexual, and structural violence in their own countries or regions because of their political views, religious beliefs, sexual orientation, or ethnic background. In fact, the journey to Europe is the hardest thing anyone without a lucky passport can ever do. 
It is one filled with extortion, torture, rape, violence, and even human slavery if you end up in Libya. The minority who managed to go through all of that and then finally jump the deadly fence in Morocco to Spain or don't sink in their boat journey in the Mediterranean or the Aegean Sea, we most likely end up in detention centers or refugee camps under inhumane living conditions being reduced to a number. Like for example, the Moria refugee camp in Greece that was burned uh, last week or 10 days ago. Um, this was a refugee camp with a maximum capacity for 3,000 people and there were 13,000 people living there for years. And those who are lucky might end up working in low paid, low skilled jobs, even if they have a PhD back in their country. So why did we start that? Well, because what if it was us? What if we were the ones in need of international protection? Would that mean that our lives are finally over, are completely destroyed? We believe in the human capital of refugees and forcibly displaced people. And we decided to create a company that would invest in refugee talent and provide them with all the support they need to regain their careers. Our company is based on six principles or six values. First, we're not an NGO. We believe in sustainable business models. We are in the business of empathy. And we believe everyone needs a future. We are hyper-transparent and we want tomorrow starting today. Finally, we don't treat people as numbers. We focus on creating and delivering value. This year in total, we have welcomed 46 refugee professionals to our accelerator program. And we currently are upskilling many of those, but 10 have already been hired in companies in Europe for highly skilled tech jobs. We're talking about electric engineers, software developers, front-end developers, cybersecurity analysts, DevOps, digital marketeers. But they are much more than that. They are the kind of team members that will always show up with a smile, always willing to walk the extra mile and support their team. They are the kind of professionals that when things get hard, they don't give up because they know what hard looks like. And nothing is harder than fleeing persecution crossing to Europe and landing that job. So that is our purpose, to create a path for refugee professionals to regain control of their lives and be able to live in peace like us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Letty. You, you did, I'm not supposed to mention anything <laughs> to say, but you did open a, a new world to me, a world I wasn't aware of uh, at, that, at that level. So thank you very much for that. And now again, just one thing for, for Rose, Matt and Paul, I know that it's, it's actually harder, your role is even harder than the one of the speakers, but if you could try and keep your overall feedback within five minutes maximum, that would be amazing. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to practice that. I'm gonna set a one minute timer for myself. <laughs> so um, Letty, that was, extraordinary in terms of content and I'm not really supposed to comment on that. So thank you very much for touching my heart this morning. Um, the problem I found exceptionally clear. Um, you made it very tangible, very, very alive and specific. Uh, the mention of the Grecian, uh, the, the refugee camp in Greece about uh, with capacity for 3,000 to 13,000 population is uh, is striking um, and it hurts. And that's actually really what you need in a problem. You need to feel it hurt. Um, so thank you. you. You did that beautifully. Um, the piece that I would say you could improve and grow in or, or clarify a little more, I'm still questioning and curious what you actually do. How do you solve this problem? So that's the area that I'd like to better understand how, and, um, and perhaps that means reducing a little bit of the information around the problem. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm gonna steal your idea, Rose, and put a timer on as well. Um, at the risk of repeating myself, um, 
wow, what what an incredible thing you're doing. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I, I cry, I'm a crier. So uh, bear, bear with me throughout all this. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be moved by all of it. Um, it's what what you're doing is is a subject very close to my heart. So I I um I, I get emotional. I, I just I think it's fantastic. I know again I'm not I'm not supposed to be talking about the content, but it's impossible not to. Just to thank you for what you're doing. Um. I well, I almost wish you didn't state the problem because you did it so powerfully that it was you know it, it it's difficult to hear that stuff even though we know that stuff it's difficult to hear it but we have to hear it everyone needs to hear it um and you, you did that really well just just as rose said i think i think you delivered that brilliantly um again i i i'd love to know more about what you're doing the end result is awesome um i've i've heard about similar uh, programs um helping wow a minute already really um so creating software developers and so on I've, I've seen these programs i'd love to know how um and your progress so far um what what's your actual impact you know how many lives have you affected that would be that would have been an awesome an awesome uh, thing to finish on but i think you did leave you did leave us with a vision and an essence which is really powerful so awesome thank you thank you awesome so i've got three minutes to chat away now right no 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 just one minute <laughs> Um, cool. So look, yeah, I really, I really liked that. I really enjoyed it. Thank you again uh, for, for sharing that. I think I agree with a lot of what Rose and, and Paul said there. I almost feel as if um, if you combined Cassandra and Letty's pitches, it would be like the perfect combination. And the reason I say that is because uh, Letty, I think you had some really hard facts, which as Paul said, were hard hitting. There was some real tangible stuff in there. And you definitely did talk about the vision, but I feel like it was way later down the pitch than it could have been. So I think take a, a leaf out of Cassandra's book and open with that. And not only open with, you know, imagine, but actually put me in it. So instead of I'm imagining someone else going through that, put me in it and say, imagine what it would be like waking up and not knowing where you're going to live tomorrow. Imagine constantly having to worry about duh, 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 because then I'm in it, you take me there and now it's my experience and that's so much harder. And then the facts just compound on top of that. Um, so I think that's the only thing that I would suggest to, to improve it, but otherwise it was a, a really good pitch. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much. Perfect timing as well. Okay. Now our third Speaker, I'm looking forward to this, Arun Jay. Again, Arun Jay, the audience is all yours. Take your time. When you're ready, you can get started. Yeah, hello, everyone, and uh, thank you, Andrea, for this opportunity. I, it's a really hard act to follow now that uh, two of you guys have gone and, and done so well. So I'm going to do my best. My name is Arun Jay Kataka, and I want to end poverty for the last billion people by 2030. And that's why I founded a nonprofit action lab to, do, to incubate moonshot ideas. So I spent the last 10 years in financial inclusion and I won a grand challenge grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And I recently published an international best-selling book called The Power of Micro Money Transfers. And I've seen the problems that we've been trying to solve in financial inclusion, international development, for the last 10 years. And the problem is, is that it really still persists because we haven't reached the last billion. And the reasons for this is, is quite simple. Startups and corporates and all those who are going after the, and, and trying to solve these problems, they end up just moving up the value chain because ultimately they're either looking to survive, looking for revenue, or you know they just, really um, you know sort of just unable to go down really to the to that last mile to the bottom of the pyramid and and so even though a lot of progress has been made over the last 10 years this population of the last billion hasn't hasn't been reached so i want to take you through a couple of journeys and and explain to you really what and how this all works. So at first, uh, to, yeah, I meet Shirley, uh, a farmer living in Uganda. Last year, she bought a solar home kit and a pay-as-you-go 
model. And she was able to replace her kerosene lamp, right? So that, and the way it works is that you pay 50 cents a week for the device every, so every week and, and it keeps working and you stop paying and it stops. So the, the idea behind it really is that 50 cents a week is the cost of kerosene. And therefore, this solution is cost neutral. So it doesn't cost Shirley any more than it would if she were to continue buying kerosene for her lamps. But in addition to creating less pollution for the world, the solution improves her health, her family's health, as they don't have to breathe exhaust gases from burning kerosene. And the improved quality of light allows her son, Jerry, to study in the evenings. So over 250 million households now have solar lights installed. And that's you know, a huge amount of progress, but there's still so much more. And one of the problems now is that the solar uh, industry has attracted a huge amount of funding and over 90% of funding goes towards this particular solution. And the reason is because people want to back a winning horse. So once something's proven, people are willing to invest and, and continue the, the scaling that solution. Whereas what about the innovation that's still needed, right? So meet Kwame, a fisherman living in Madagascar, one of the poorest countries in the world. His fishing boat uses a petrol engine, which is rather expensive to run. And we haven't gotten to a point where electricity is cheaper than combustion. However, a month use of an electric engine would reduce his CO2 emissions by 1.5 tons. And there is a voluntary carbon market that pays $12 per ton, which means $18 becomes a subsidy that could go towards making the solution either cost neutral or cost negative, meaning Kwame could pay less per month for the engine as compared to his current cost of petrol. So the next time you're booking a flight, I know we won't be doing that for a while, but any opportunity you get where it says, you know, you can offset your carbon footprint by making a donation, please do, because that, you know, helps. That really helps because all these corporates who then collect that donation are forced to, to actually make these purchases and, and help people less fortunate. So our goal is to deeply research the problems that users at the bottom of the pyramid have and develop solutions that will provide and solve the identified problems. And most importantly, using a cost neutral business model. We really don't want to burden them further. And, and I mean, it just wouldn't even work if, if the solution isn't cost neutral or cost negative and cost negative means gives them more money than they have today. So either a revenue generator or, or it just costs less than the existing solution, like in the case of Kwame. So once this example is in Northern Kenya where users don't have network coverage and, and you know, because of this, the terrain and they struggle to use M-Pesa, one of the most successful mobile money solutions globally. And, and really from talking to these users, we've understood that building an offline solution really makes a difference. So that's, that's the sort of projects that we are working on. And, and you know, really for me, the youth of Africa and India have shown such a strong desire to improve their situation and are eager to try new things. And a lot of them becoming gig workers, which, you know, isn't great, but for them is the first step out of you know, poverty and getting, getting a better life. And that to me just really gives me the conviction that we can solve this problem together. So if this is of interest, please visit inclusionactionlab.org and join our tribe. You can contribute in so many different ways and there's opportunities to really 
you know, come together and, and work towards solving this problem over the next 10 years. And we really, really need your help. I'm Aranjay and I'm determined to end poverty by 2030. And I deeply believe it's possible. Will you join me? Thank you. Thank you, Arunjay. Uh, my name is Arunjay and I want to end poverty for the last billion people by 2030. I loved the way you started. I wasn't supposed to say that, but I really love that. Now I would leave to, I will leave it with uh, Rose, Paul and, and Matt to, to share their feedback. I'm going to pass to Matt because it's hard to be the last person True. giving feedback. So let's bring Matt to the front here. I've, I've got my points. And thank you, Aaron Jay. We'll be back. I think it's hard to be the first person. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, wow. I mean, there are big goals and there are huge goals, right? Um, and so first of all, hats off to you for for giving yourself that goal. And um, it's incredible. And I'd, you know, I'd love to, to support it. I think the first thing I'd say is, wow, um, in terms of the authority piece, that was huge for me. Like it was a really strong start to the pitch and it left me go, I, as soon as you said, like I got funding from the uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, I was all ears. Um, if I'm honest with you, from that point on, you lost me a little bit. And the reason you lost me is because I wasn't 100% clear. I know the symptom is that we've got all this poverty and I get that. Um, I wasn't 100% clear how the examples that you used and the things that you were talking about related to poverty and, and hunger, right? Um, so that might just be me being a bit slow, but there wasn't like, for me, there wasn't an obvious light bulb moment of me going, oh, I get it. Like, we think that this is why so many people are starving in the world, but actually this is the, the problem. Um, for me, I still left thinking, wow, that's a huge problem. And I'm not even sure where to start with that. So my feedback would be maybe thinking about some metaphors. And I know you used little stories and case studies, but then tying that back into the overall purpose so that we're really clear about how that particular thing relates to the problem that you're solving. But I mean, apart from, apart from that, I think it was a, a really strong pitch. And I think I would lean into that authority piece more uh, and just really kind of, you know, hone in on that. Great. Thank you so much, Matt. No worries. Shall I dive in next? I'll stay in the middle. It's, it's definitely the easiest space to be in. Um, Aaron Jay, th thank you. Um, I know of your work, but we, we haven't met. Um, uh, yeah, I'm all for moonshots. What a moonshot. Very, very noble goal. Um, thanks for sharing it with us. Um, I, I agree very much with, with Matt. I think you, you now, clarity, authority, the problem, um, the solution. I feel like I was working out the solution as you told the story. And I actually really enjoyed that. <laughs> um, but as far as, as giving a, a, a clear pitch goes, I think it would have been helpful to just maybe in, in a couple of sentences, just summarize, we do this to achieve this by doing this, um, and then give the examples. And I think then our brains would have been aligned to your paradigm and the way that you work, because it's clearly, I mean, it's very clever what you do. Um, and, but what, when we're expecting it, then we can make sense of the stories. Um, but, you know, it's, it's really powerful. And I love what you're doing. Um, I, I think um, similar to Letty, I would have loved to have heard more about the actual impact you've made so far. Um, how many lives have you affected? You know, how far are you? You've got a number. You've got, you've got an actual goal here. You've got a number. How far are you along in that journey? And, and what do you need to get to the next step in that maybe? Um, but awesome. Thank you for sharing. Great. Thanks a lot, Paul. Without uh, echoing my fellow judges here, I just want to say incredible project. Also love the moonshot. Um, we were just speaking, Paul and I, before this about Peter Diamandis and uh, Singularity University 360 and just having big visions. And if you've read Simon Sinek's The Infinite Game, having something that, you know, extends beyond your lifetime. So all of you, I mean, honestly, you, you have been better than three cups of coffee for my day. So Cassandra, Letty, Arunjay, thank you. Thank you. And I look forward to Sapna after this to take us away. Um, my, my main points here, one huge positive that I, I think is excellent to see a difference in our lineup is uh, Arunjay, you, you hardly read 
Did you have notes, just nod or shake your head? Did you have notes of your, yes. So that's kind of the backpackers model in terms of public speaking. Some people need a specific script to follow to feel comfortable. Um, and some people only feel comfortable when they've got notes to hit on the trail, but you don't have to know exactly what you're gonna say to get there. So I really liked seeing another example of someone who you're, you're speaking naturally and to us presently. And I, I felt a different connection there. However, I think it needed some more practice um, to be able to move through fluidly a little bit, uh, to stay connected to the heart uh, while you were um, moving through the key points. And I'm gonna add uh, to one more area perhaps to in grow. Uh, one is using a timer when you practice, because I think you went two minutes beyond five, which was the constraints. And uh, that's kind of the first piece is just follow the rules there. Um, and, and I'll take my own, you know, point. I forgot to set my timer. So I'll stop here, but I just want to say thank you so much. Uh, excellent work. And uh, I, I could see you really developing this just by staying connected to the heart and practicing a little bit more with the timer. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rose. Thank you. Thank you, Arun J, Rose, Paul, and Matt. And now one more presentation from Sapna. Please, everybody, exclamation mark in the chat box if we are all ready to get started with, with the last page. Come on, let me see these exclamation marks. Perfect. All right. So, Sapna, you've got five minutes. I'm really looking forward to your presentation. We've been cooperating and, and doing a few things, interviews together. So I know how great you are and the ideas behind your business. So the audience is all yours. Sorry, I was on mute then. I was like, is it, are you going to send me on mute? Um, right. Okay. Wow. I'm so humbled by these wonderful businesses doing inspirational things. But what if your company is not directly like mine, built around doing good? Actually, I believe that any business can be a force for good in the world. I'm Satna Puri from Innovations ID, and we're a brand consultancy that love working with entrepreneurs who are ethical and purpose-driven to help them get brand clarity, stand out in their industry, and supercharge their business growth. Because if you're not standing out for the right reasons, it doesn't matter how good you are or how much good you're doing if people don't see you in the first place. We create brands centered around their values. Why? Because values are one of the things that help a brand or company stand out from the competition. Values led organizations help people make an emotional connection with them. People are more loyal to companies. They feel share and support their beliefs and they feel better about spending with ethical companies that give back and make a difference. Values should be embedded into every touch point of your company. Think about your own values as a starting point and the difference you want to make, your legacy if you like. I've always believed that we should leave the world a better place than when we found it in. I've been recycling and doing sponsored silences, runs and swims since I was 10 years old. My first efforts were for a Blue Peter appeal, collecting tin foil to raise money for, for guide dogs. My poor mum would have to package up big heavy bundles of the stuff from my classmates and trek to the post office every week. I'm still a big advocate of leaving as light a footprint on the, on the planet as possible. So I run my home and business in that way. For example, all our packaging is 100% recycled or recyclable, and we encourage our customers to reuse or recycle it too. Every January, we, we publish an updated blog with easy, sustainable living tips for busy people and share other green content throughout the year. My quest to leave the world a better place goes much deeper though. We are a very people first brand and I have a deep sense of fairness. So as a company, we support the UN global goal number 10 to reduce inequalities. Once I had children, I couldn't find the kind of work environment I wanted. It was so unfair to me that so many talented people, often women, are lost to the workforce because of office hours, expensive childcare and lengthy commutes. So I built my business differently, starting with a vision to help others to do fulfilling work in a flexible, remote and supportive environment that embraces work-life family and fits around, you know, kind of hobbies and, and life outside of work. This was years before COVID. In addition, a percentage of our revenues always went to charity. We now support three causes, 
each with a focus on supporting equality. One, for gender equality, we support Care International to educate and support women and girls globally, because when women are empowered and equal, society benefits too. Two, to help end homelessness, we support crisis. Last Christmas, instead of the usual boozy gifts for our clients, we donated Christmas Day meals and beds um, for the night on behalf of every single one of our clients. And three, for racial equality. I've been speaking about and I'm putting together a book inspired by Black Lives Matters. In addition, all profits from our brand strategy workshops go to Runnymede, which is the UK's leading think tank in racial equality. I thought this quest for equality had nothing to do with our core business activity, but it was only when creating this pitch that I realised that in helping businesses become more visible, in giving them confidence and clarity, we are in effect equalising their chances of success too. So you see, any kind of business can be a force for good. Go back to your values, your beliefs, your non-negotiables, and make sure that's how you build your customer experience, treat your staff, treat your clients, your suppliers and the planet. And you too can have a business that makes a world, the world a better place than you found it in. My name's Satna Piru of Innovisions ID, and I believe we can all be a force for good. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Satna. Thank you so much. That, that's a, you've summarized, I would say, in the best possible way, the main idea behind this summit. If we are here today, we've got, I see 36 people at the moment, because we all believe that any business can and should be a force for good, even if, as you said, you don't have that as the core element of what you do. So that's amazing. Thank you very much for, for sharing your ideas and your vision. And again, Rose, Paul, Matt, up to you. It's your turn to go first, Paul. Oh, okay, let's do this. So oh. uh, just disclaimer, Sapna's a friend of mine. Um, so I'll try and be <laughs> as unbiased as possible. Um, she's also been on my Purpose First podcast as well. Um, so I have a, a kind of um, a peep under the hood of the Purpose Driven Enterprise um, that she runs. Um, so thank you, Sapna. Uh, awesome. I, I, and also thank you, Andrea, for uh, bringing Sapna on because I think it's really important to show how businesses that aren't directly purpose-driven can still be purpose-driven. I think that's awesome. And um, high five, Sapna. I think you nailed that, that message for sure. Um, so clarity, authority, the problem, the solution, I think you did that, that really well. And also you left, you left us with some very clear next steps too, and, and an essence of, of, um, of, of what could be if we all joined in with that. So as, as far as the, the, the structure, which is where I'm focusing on, um, you know, classic KPI structure, you know, really good and a, and a great message. So, yeah, thank you. Um, I think that if we all do this, if other businesses do that, the effect can be really dramatic. And so um, for the sake of, of, of fairness, if I was to say one thing that I would have liked to appear more of, it would be more of that vision at the end, the what could happen if we all did this if everyone made those little steps that that compound interest could be really powerful um mm. so so i think you could have turned up the volume on that a little um, but thank you so much thank you should, okay. should i decide now not rose okay <laughs> <laughs> um sapna yes thank you so much um there were so many strong points and really overall, I'm going to just say it felt extremely professional and really, really beautiful as a model for professionalism in uh, business and how, and, and what does that mean? Professional, um, you, your background, the way you look, there's, there's a presentation aspect to this and it's not superficial. These things really do make a difference in how we connect and what's clear. You're very well lit. I mean, some of these things I'm looking at, you know, I'm like, that's a great reminder. I need to have a desk lamp. We're in a different environment these days with uh, COVID and everyone being on Zoom. So thank you for setting a great standard for what the space can look like, as well as a really nice blend um, between connecting and kind of pulling away from the words that I know you are reading, 
Um, again, when you're doing something on Zoom versus being in an audience, uh, it's pretty clear to see eye movement. So we can tell immediately if something is being read or not, which is fine. It's not a bad thing. It's just, can you do that while staying connected to the group? And actually, I think, Cassandra, your, your pacing was exceptional um, in terms of staying very clear, uh, taking pauses, and I think Safna, a little bit more pausing, and you have this lovely British accent that can roll a little bit. So for a non-British ear to just slow some of your key phrases down at moments would be excellent. Mm. Um, and you had time, so you can take the pausing. Uh, and that's, that's all I'm gonna offer you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And a, a lovely British accent is definitely better than an Italian accent. So. Oh, no, it depends <laughs> <well>. <laughs> All right, Matt. Sapna, absolutely love that. Well done. Uh, nailed it. And it's, uh, it's clear that you are part of the Dent community <laughs> and you've done a lot of work on your, on your pitching. I think I love the, the fact you started with why. I love the fact you started with the belief. I love the clarity you had on that pitch, who it was for. Um, you nailed the problem. You nailed the consequences of that problem. You talked about, you know, this isn't just values. It helps you stand out from the competition. I then absolutely loved how you used uh, your personal story and, and said, look, you can start with your personal val values, brought that in. And then at the end, you brought it all back around to say how this is about um, your business and making more of an impact. And, and it all tied in really nicely. I could not fault the content or the structure or, or any of it. I thought it was great. If I had to give you one thing to improve on, I, it would literally just be, you know, internalizing that and being able to keep that same structure and flow without actually having to to read mm. it or to refer to your notes but i know you've probably only put it together recently and and it's very hard to do that in a concise amount of time so yeah that would be my only only feedback thank you perfect thank you Mar thank you very much and here we are now it's time to announce the the winner so here is what we are going to do first of all i'm going to let me just share this because this is the the prize i hope you like it the prize that we have for the winner, which is our own at Ideas on Stage presentation, presentation skills online course that you can find on Fiverr Learn. And these online course includes 26 video lessons for a total of more than two hours of content. It's super practical. There are many practical tools and exercises and templates that you can use both in preparation for an important presentation coming up or anywhere you get lifetime access to this. So it can be a, a useful resource for, for you for all your future presentations. And what I want to do now, let's try. So Rose, Paul and Matt, I'm going to try and send you away in a, in a breakout room if that doesn't work, we know we are going to try the WhatsApp group, but let me see first whether I can send you away here. Just a sec. Actually, I can stop sharing. Yep. And uh, Paul, Rose, and, and Matt, I guess two minutes. Is it enough for you to just f try and find an agreement without fighting? Two minutes? Yeah, can we agree on that? All right, so breaker rooms. Let's give it a try. So I'm, I'm, dry, I'm trying to, I'm going to press a button and let's see how it goes. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I see that. I think it's working for Rose. And Okay, so I think they are there, right? Because I don't see them here anymore. Perfect, so we've got a couple of minutes before they come back. Does anybody want to share anything? First of all, before we do that again, I always like this. Could you please type just an exclamation mark if you've enjoyed this session and if any of the ideas that our speakers have shared with you resonated with you? And also, if you think about the four presentations, just, and again, feel free to either unmute yourselves or just use the chat box. What, what's the one thing, if you think about the four presentations, what's the one thing that really resonated with you? Just, just let me know, either in the chat box or if you prefer, feel free to unmute yourself. Passion. 
fashion from is it in general the the four speakers or have you noticed that shown by one speaker in particular all oh, okay perfect what else thank you sean for that anything else that really is the one thing that you do that you really remember from this session that really resonated with you it could be anything it could be the idea itself the message that was shared it could be maybe the way the message was delivered what is it that really resonated with you today don't be shy i said at the beginning let's make it interactive i see sean is trying to type something again right <laughs> that no me oh yeah absolutely sean says that no mission is too big yeah we've we've definitely learned that with with arun j and with all the others absolutely the purpose the why chaitanya thank you for that red on white is, is that something <laughs> yeah, that's great Sincere intentions led to great impact, impactful. The refugees' examples really connect. Yeah, I agree with you, Sean. And that's why I said to Letty, it really opened a new world to me because, of course, we all know about refugees, but, and I've, to be very honest, I, I've never thought about how they can make a real positive impact if we give them a chance. So that was amazing my brand colors exactly yeah 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 all right so let's see whether i'm going to try and call them back close all rooms so they should be back with us in a few seconds ella says the impact of examples yeah yeah bringing you home to the personal experience absolutely great reminders and I'm going to ask, as they come back, I'm going to ask the judges to give me the name of the winner before you know it. So let's see. All right, I see Paul, I see, was that enough, Paul, Matt, Rose, was that enough? Or did I give you enough time? Where did you send us? We just got back from some crazy yeah, Harry Potter crazy land. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I hope that you were together the in that crazy, worked. yeah. All right, yeah, so, yeah. perfect. Would you like to just tell me in the WhatsApp group that we have, just give me the name, please, so that I know it before the others. I want sure. to have the advantage. I'll, 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 you I'll do it, Paul? Sure. Okay. And then in the meantime, you can decide who is going to announce it, Rose, Matt, uh, or, or Paul. And before you do though, I want to share my screen and that's why I need to have, I see that Paul is typing. It's an essay. <laughs> I don't need to know in the, in, the, in the message why you chose that particular speaker. Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it would be great if you could also explain the reason behind your... So just give me a second because I just need to adjust my, my presentation. So just a second. All right, here. So... Okay, so ready to get started. So you can see my slides again now, right? Yeah, thumbs up if you can see my slides. No, Sapna can't, but the others can. So the others can say, all right. So who would like to announce the winner? Paul, Rose or Matt? Yeah, I'm happy to do that. And then Rose, if you wanna do the honorable mentions then. Um, so we decided that the winner was Sapna. Congratulations, Sapna. Well done. Well done. Round of applause for Sapna. Amazing. You are on mute, but you won. Yeah. Even if you're. <laughs> <laughs> w would you like to try and unmute yourself? Just take your time. Yeah. Yes. There you go. Yes. Sorry, I thought you were in charge of the mute button. So uh, yeah. I didn't want to thank you very much. I don't know what else to say. Tough competition. <laughs> and um, thank you to the judges. Yes. Um, everybody else was really, really inspiring as well. So thank mm -hmm. you.
Mm-hmm. And actually to that point, Andre, I'm just going to jump in here because uh, the team of judges has, we needed to say that, yes, the reason Sapna, we chose you as the winner is because there was sort of this best all around quality. If you were to put all the factors of um, congruence in terms of facial expression, tone, uh, messaging, use of structure, um, you, you had it all in there. However, each of the uh, speakers and businesses brought something very important and excelled at. And we just wanted to offer a little honorable mention, if you will. Um, Cassandra, your, your pacing was top of the game for this, this whole group. And I think a really great standard for pausing and allowing time for people to connect to your message. So thank you for demonstrating that. And we have um, an incredible example by Letty of the power of emotion. So we just thought yours was most moving, if you will, uh, in terms of using emotional engagement to get across your message through specifics, as well as tone, uh, letting your heart come through and your values shine. And Aronje, uh, you were just the most natural here. So you were able to really speak to us as if we were at a, a party or a gathering and just tell us very humanly, what are you doing and, and what it's about and what your vision is. So we can learn something uh, very big and important from each of you. Uh, and pitching is not an easy thing. So you just did something very hard and you did it all beautifully. So thank you again for showing us. And uh, Paul, do you want to add anything there that I've missed? No, I think between both of you, um, you, you, you've covered it other than, yeah, um, I was quite vocal about how moved I was, uh, particularly by, by the first two. And, and, but, but what all of you are doing is just awesome. So thank you for sharing today. Thank you. And, and thank you all for, for being part uh, of, this, of this event. Congratulations, Sapna, again. So there is, this is, I'm going to send you a, a link where you can get access to this online course complimentary for free. Now, actually, I hope you don't mind, Sapna, but I was thinking that now normally I'm very competitive, but I think that by by definition, because of the very nature of this event, this is one of those events where really everybody deserves to win. That's what I believe. So here is what I'd like to do. I would like to, to offer these online course to, to everybody, to all the speakers and the judges as well, really as a thank you for, for you being part of uh, of these of these events for collaborating with us on these and then with Sapna because you want then in addition to the online course um, I would be very very happy to offer a complimentary coaching session with you me and you and if you've got an important presentation coming up or whatever it is if you simply want to a little bit improve your presentation skills I would be very happy to do that uh, with you so this is my idea and uh, I hope it's, it's okay. I also have something for, for the audience and this is my thank you for the audience. It's, it's a value bundle, which is a collection. I'm going to send you a link, so check it out via email. It's a collection of free resources. Everything is complimentary. And what that includes is, first of all, the opportunity for you to express your interest in a one-to-one -one consultation if you're interested in learning more about how we work with the clients you can get access to the presentation scorecard, which is an online tool that you can use to assess your presentation skills very, very quickly. It just takes less than five minutes. You can join one of our masterclasses. You get access to our ebook, Five Principles for Powerful Presentations. Connect with us on our Facebook group. And you can also get access to the five-day presentation challenge where you can learn lots of practical stuff to, for you to be able to create amazing presentations in just five days. So I'm going to send you a link. And if you're interested for those, I know because I've seen people in the audience here that some of you have already attended a masterclass. 
If you haven't, if you'd like to learn more, a little bit more about public speaking and presentation skills, you can find, uh, this is a regular event that we run, Five Principles for Powerful Presentations. You can find it on Eventbrite, you have the link there. You can take a screenshot if you want, Ideas on Stage UK dot eventbrite.com or you can type my name or ideas of stage uk on eventbrite and you can find it i would really love to see you there and and that's it thank you very much again to everybody to the speakers the judges the audience without you these wouldn't have been possible and remember the reason why we've decided to do this is because i strongly believe that if you you can have the greatest, the most world-changing, inspiring idea in the world, but if you can't communicate it, I'm sorry, but that idea doesn't matter. And at Ideas on Stage, we are like, super frustrated when we see great, great ideas, sometimes even products, initiatives, services, getting lost, being forgotten, not being accepted, not because of the ideas themselves. The ideas are great but just because of the way they are presented, just because of the way they are communicated. And especially, it wasn't the case in this summit because I do believe that the four presentations were really, really, really good. But we see outside of this summit, we see all the time, so many great ideas getting lost just because of the way they are presented. And when these ideas have the power to change the world, then we get even more frustrated. So that's why we've decided to do this. And I also believe that life is a pitch. Life is a pitch. Now think about it. Do you remember maybe the day you got your first job? Or maybe the day you got your first pay rise? Or the day you started your business? or the day that you came up with your world-changing idea and you started a business because of that. Or even better, the day, do you remember the day that you got your first paying client because of the idea? Super exciting, isn't it? I still remember that day. Or it doesn't have to be a professional achievement, even personally. Do you remember the day that you convinced your partner to move in with you or to marry you if that happened? You see, throughout life, we are often presented with key moments that determine our future. And most of our lives are like canals. The trajectory is quite flat and unchanging like this. And what determines the quality often are those important moments when someone gives you the opportunity or you give yourselves the opportunity to pitch and present and communicate an idea. And if you get it right, what happens is that you can change the trajectory. So the new path of your lives then become like a staircase going up, flat up, flat up, flat up. And if you think about it, every time you go up, it could be your first job, your first pay rise, your first business, your first purpose driven business, your first client, your partner moving in with you. Every time you go up, it doesn't have to be a formal pitch or presentation, but it's often because of an effective way of communicating your ideas. Isn't that true? And that's what happens if you get it right. If you get it wrong, it's very simple. The trajectory remains flat and unchanging, or if it changes, it goes down. So if there is one thing that you can do to make sure that you continue to go up, whatever that means to you, that one thing is working on your ability to pitch and present and communicate your ideas. And this is especially the case if you have an idea that can change the world. If you have an idea that can change the world, it's your responsibility, it's your obligation, I would say, to make sure that you understand deeply how to present it, how to pitch it, how to communicate it effectively. Thank you very much again, everybody, the speakers, the judges, the audience. I do hope it's been useful. I hope you enjoyed it. My dream is to get to 2030. It's not as bold as Arun Jay's, but my dream is to get to 2030, celebrating the 10th anniversary of the Good Pitch Summit. And it would be amazing if we all get there and then we can say, actually, we were there 10 years ago at the very beginning when the journey started. So thank you very much again.
let's keep in touch. All the very best. Ciao.